what strength you give to simply carry on Through life's toils and tests, in the worst and best I'm not ever left alone You were always right beside me You hear me every time I pray and Since I first began, I've been my dearest friend And I give you all the praise
I thank you, Lord, for the strength you give to simply carry on. Through life's toils and tests, in the worst and best, I'm not ever left alone. You were always right beside me. You hear me every time I pray. Strength you give to simply carry on. 
True life's toils and tests in the worst and best I'm not ever left alone You were always right beside me You hear me every time I pray And since I first began I've been my dearest friend And I give you all the praise Yes, we want to open up the floor now for those who wish to give tributes on behalf of our late sister, Sylvina, sister, Leighton. Good morning to everyone. I'm just here to give tribute to Sister Latham, from the Augustus family to the Latham family. I just want to pay my sympathy to all the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We all pay the loss of, have the pain of Sister Latham. Now I'm just going to tell you uh, just a little background of Sister Latham of our church. When I knew Sister Latham as a member of the church, we all used to be downstairs. And in the Sabbath school we have from the cradle roll, Sister Latham played a good role in the cradle roll section. In those days, we used this to teach the children from our hand. We call them finger play. We will teach them finger play. I saw the picture, she just as if she laughing, just as how she did. Finger play, we used this to teach them songs about, the, about creation. Who made a beautiful sea? Who made a beautiful sky? Stars, who made a beautiful sunshine, and we use our fingers to teach the children from the cradle rule. And Sister Latham, I knew Sister Latham, she did a very, very good job. 
we all was teaching from the cradle roll right up to the primary. We walked together. Now, I could remember Sister Latham was a faithful deaconess. You know, when the time for communion, we all will come and the week before, we will clean the windows, clean up the church very nice, and then the next week we have communion. She was just a faithful member that you could have depended upon. I could remember her in the community service department. She did a very good role. Sister Latham was one who you could have depended upon. Even though she cannot make it, she will say, I will come. And I could remember Sister Latham again right up to her apart, apart from church. Sister Latham was, Brother Latham was the, one of the man, main organization leader. And she, was, she had been a part of the community service department. We will go just by Sister Kid there and we will cook and we will have food for the men. Sister Latham was very faithful. And if you notice that I had my white cap, it's because of our faithfulness. When we said something, we mean what we say. Number one, what I did like, like her for. When we accept the message, we teach our children to call our different members who just come in, learn them to say brothers and sisters. No one, what children, my children, are, her children, are, those members who have passed away, children could have meet and say, Miss Latham, I'm Miss Costas. No, we teach them to know that we are our brother keeper. And so they grow up with that love unto this very moment. If I meet anyone, any one of the children coming, you will hear this as Sister Augustus. The last time I visit Sister Latham, myself and Pastor Samuel White, we did have a crusade right above their house, there on the piece of land there. And Sister Latham, every morning, every Sabbath morning, we get her to church. We saw Sister Latham and her husband in the boat to get ready. Even the Brother Latham could not come to come to the service. We did it. Brother Latham and Sister Latham would sit there and do the service sometimes. Sister Latham was very faithful to the church. And it will be unfair this morning for me to sit in my seat and did not say something about Sister Latham. When after church, we will visit together on Sabbath. There is no home that we could not have think about that we will not visit. We did not visit in the Adventist members' home only. We will gather together at the evening and then we will go to the home. I could remember Sister Latham, grandmother, one evening when we visit her, a Sabbath evening. And when we sing, when peace like a river attended my way. Oh, that lady, she, she shout, she praised God for the service that we had with her. She was a very nice young lady. Sister Latham was a part of our community service department. You see our members there, Pastor Hector as the leader. When Sister Latham took time to come, I will always Sister Latham, and she always have a laugh. So this evening, we all feel the pain. And we all love with one love for the children, the family circle. Let us all have that unity and that cooperation as members of Christ. Let us remember that we cannot see her, go to meet her now. But she, Sister Latham, has already died. We have the privilege to see Sister Latham while we live the life Sister Latham lived. I know Sister Latham, she was a honest girl. There is something I'd really like to talk about Sister Latham. When you visit Sister Latham home, oh, she have a beautiful garden. She grow all kind of stuff. 
And there was one time I like to think I like to buy from Salatum. I like to buy soil. And just a few weeks ago, Lawrence was telling me, Mommy, I want you to go to Sister Latham funeral. Because one time when I sent Lawrence to collect the soil, when Lawrence came back with the paper bag, I think of Sister Latham like Joseph in the Bible. The story of Joseph. She put back the money in the bag and tell him to tell me. Don't bother with that. So I know Sister Latham, she was a nice farmer and she was a vegetable, vegetable take care of garden. And from that, I could remember that I, I have soil, I plant soil bed from Sister Latham's soil because the amount that you will send to me, I will just cut the bush and plant the soil. Sweet pepper, all kind of good things. Plum trees, and she had a big graft here, the mango tree behind the house. When, she, when I ever I visit, she was a sister Augustus, go and pick up any amount you want. She was a very, very kind member. And we all grow together, we live together. The children, they could testify of her love. We have to eat each other. So may her soul rest in peace. And to the children, I am encouraging you, keep pressing on. My God is able, and my God is your God. I know she bring you up in the church, she did her best. And what I want you to do, those of you who do not stay in the faith, I want you to come in and you will see your mom again. May God bless each one and may her soul rest in peace. Amen. All right. Yes, the next person can come forward. Uh, please, uh, we really want to stick according to the time, so please try and be as brief as possible so that you can allow as many persons as possible to share tributes. Good morning, church. My name is Monroe, Pastor Monroe Hector. I'm from Richland Park right here. And I just stand here on behalf of the diabetic group and my own family. First, I want to say to the Latham and Douglas families and other families of Sylvia, on behalf of our relationship I extend our condolences to the entire family. Sister had been my sister-in-law in all the years. Her first son was my brother's son. But somehow along, somewhere along, my brother dropped the catch and he lost it here. So, I am not sure why, I think Kenzie is not here, but I understand that we are not supposed to be around. Uncle is saying, please accept my condolences on behalf of the family and the loss of Sylvia. We do miss her. She's been very generous and kind to my family. Whatever or whenever I had asked her any favor, she was always willing. She became a member of the Richland Park Hypertensive and Diabetic Group under the uh, leadership of staff nurse at that time, Bartholomew, who is now a sister. And she had been very, very generous to the group. If you notice, I'm wearing a t-shirt and there are members in the audience there who are also representing the diabetic group from Richmond Park. Because of COVID, the group is a little bit quiet right now, dormant, but 
we have lost quite a bit of our, our members. We are still recruiting members. We still need people to uh, be supporters of the group. The group is a very good group. Sylvia paid up her part. Whenever we were distributing food baskets to the resident of the village, Sylvia would have given her best, best shot to make sure that everybody gets something. So I know how to be. She was very, very generous, and I'm confident that all the members of the group are going to miss her. We lose quite a lot of good people, and we keep losing good ones. But we're hoping by the grace of God that we will get some more better ones. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Richland Park Hypertensive and Diabetic Group and my own family, I say to the families of Sylvia, be courageous, give thanks to the Lord, always remember that the Lord gave and the Lord take it away. You can only say, blessed be the name of the Lord. So I trust by the grace of God, you will grow strong and live together in peace, love and unity. We miss Sylvia, may our soul rest in peace. Amen. So just while the next person is contemplating, what I remember most about Sister Latham is that I can recall when I when I used to stand here taking up song service, I can just still see her in the back right across there. And she used to be loud and singing, clapping. And I normally say when, when she was at home, when we visited her several times, she used to say, I miss you for song service. She was very active and she will surely be missed. So who's going to be the next person? While you think about that, we'll just sing at least a verse or two of 528, a shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's are rocking him, we hide. He's a shelter in the time of storm. But if you're ready right now, we'll just pause the singing just to make way for you to come. So if you're coming, just come. We'll stop at any time just to accommodate you. Mm, the Lord's a rock in him. We hide a shelter in the time of storm. Seek your whatever may be tied. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, mighty man. by night, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, no fears alarm, no foes afraid, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, mighty, mighty rock in the weary land, cool and shade on the burning sand. shelter in the time of the raging floods the raging floods may round us be a shelter in the time of storm oh we find in God a safe retreat a shelter in the time of storm oh mighty mighty rock in the weary land cooling cooling shade on the burning sand faithful faithful guide for the pilgrims by 
a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rod divine, oh, refuge them, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, be thou our help forever name, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, mighty, mighty rock in the weary land, cooling, cooling shade on the burning sand. Faithful, faithful guide for the pilgrim's band, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, yes, he's a shelter in the time of storm. Yes, we are still doing open tributes to so those who wish to do so. Just Please move forward at this time as we continue to celebrate the life of our dear sister Sylvia later. Well, we'll keep singing until we're impressed to do so number 483. We'll sing number 483. I need thee every hour. 483. I need thee every hour. As for those who just came in, we are celebrating the light of Sister Sylvia Latham. And we are having open tributes at this time if you wish to do so. Just move forward. We will stop so we can accommodate you at any time. So I need the every hour. I need the every hour. Most gracious Lord. in case anybody needs to come at this time. I need thee every hour. All right, let's continue with our third, third stanza. I need thee every hour. Enjoy our pain. I need thee every hour. my 
my Savior, I come. Let's sing the fourth stanza again. I need thee. I need thee every hour. Teach me thy will and thy rich promises in me. Close this segment. I can recall it was this same sister Latham, brother and sister Latham, when I do visit, they were to me good advisors. And Kadi would attest to this. And if I did miss a visit, and they were sister Latham and asked, Alex, where have you been all the time? But um, I, I must say that they have been a good source of encouragement for me. When I visit them, I just listen. Imagine even as elders, we go there to visit them and trust me, they would encourage you. They would surely be missed. Sister Layton will surely be missed. May God continue to be with the family members as you mourn the loss of your loved one. I just want to give you thanks. 
Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters, members of the community. We are at a sad occasion, and I've been afforded the opportunity, despite the sadness of the occasion, to welcome you all to this service today as we reflect 
on and celebrate the life of our departed sister, the late Sylvia Adam. A wonderful woman. I've personally, I've had the opportunity on numerous occasions to personally interact. This is late and the rest of the family, Rob Scholes, happen members of the family as well. And I can attest to the fact, very wonderful family, Sister Latham, a very wonderful woman. And indeed, it's always sad when a loved one departs this life. I was in discussion with a colleague this week around the same age group, and we were reflecting on the fact that this is a path that every one of us will have to travel, will travel at some point if time should last. What is important is what we do with the time that God has given to us now. That when this time comes and those of us who remain reflect, we would indeed reflect with assurance, feeling confident that our loved ones who have departed this life would have done so with their destiny, their future sealed in Jesus Christ. And we can have, as we continue to live, the blessed hope, if we remain faithful, that we will be reunited someday with our faithful loved ones who pass on before us. Let us continue to live and rejoice with this blessed hope that our sister has died in Christ and she will be a part of that first resurrection. May that be our hope or confidence as we plan to be part of the resurrection and they're reuniting with the saints, with Jesus Christ, when he comes again. So welcome, and I trust that as we sit and reflect today, that whatever happens here today would be a means of helping us to strengthen our faith, our trust, our confidence in Jesus Christ as it brings comfort to the members of the bereaved family. So on behalf of the management, membership of the Richmond Park Seven Adventist Church, I'd like to take this opportunity to extend our deepest condolences to the members of the bereaved family. I'd also like to do so on my own personal behalf and on the behalf of the staff and students of the Mountain View Adventist Academy. Several of the grandchildren are currently students of our school, so please accept our deepest sympathies. May God continue to bless you and comfort you as you grieve at this time. We will continue with the use of him, the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. It's on the program sheet, the first hymn on the program sheet. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, hair of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. I invite you to stand as we raise our voices in singing this opening hymn. Let's sing.
As of our eyes are closed, our mighty and our loving Father, we do count it a privilege to be here today on the land of the living to celebrate with Latham's family the life of the late Sylvia Latham. Dear Father, we want to thank you for the way that you have been with her, the way that you have protected her and you have spread her influence across the Trump Park, even among our family members, dear Father. Even though this may be a sad occasion for them, a hurting one, you promise in your words that you would never leave them, nor would you forsake them. You said in your words that you would never give them more than they can bear. And even during this ordeal, dear Father, we ask that you may stretch forth your healing arms, that you may comfort them, that they may find solace in Christ Jesus. Continue to be with us, dear Father, even us as we look on, dear Father, help us to realize that death is present among us and it will remain until Christ comes. So help us to live each day as if it is our last. Live a life that is pleasing in your sight that when you come, you can say to us, come ye blessed of my Father, enter a kingdom that I have prepared for you. Be with us and be with the rest of the program, we pray. Be with pastors as they stand and they preach. Thus saith the Lord, may souls be touched, may hearts be healed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. The first scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 18. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how see some among you that there is no res resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Here ends the scripture reading. All right, just to let you know that the program will run unannounced. So please, attention to the program sheet. So at this time, we'll be favored with special music by Felix James and family.
The second scripture reading for today will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 55. I will now read in your hearing. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Here ends the reading of God's holy word.
Good afternoon, everyone. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and call me, call me away. It's so bright, and the land is delight, and the night, night is as black as the sea. since Papa Rafi, your husband, departed us. I did not expect you to follow so quick. Definitely gone too soon. My brothers and sisters, I can only imagine how much you are hurting, how much you are missing her. Nothing I can say or do can remove what you are experiencing right now. But I do know we are strong people, both the Latham and the Douglases, and she will be proud of us all. Just think, 
no more pain, no more suffering, she's in a better place. I have a poem I like to read. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following paths God made for me. I took his hand, I heard him call, then turn and bid farewell to all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to sing, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found my peace at close of play. And if my pardon left the void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, ah yes, these things too I will miss. Be not burdened deep with sorrow, I wish you sunshine of tomorrow. My life being full, I've suffered much, good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seems all too brief, don't lengthen it, now with grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wants me now. He sets me free. Rest in peace, sister. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you all. Good day, everyone. My name is Leroy Douglas. And I'm the first of ten children. The first to have seen that lovely, pleasant, beautiful face of my mom. Sylvia Latham, affectionately known as Sister. 2021, however, has been a very sad and devastating year for me and the rest of our families. Beginning January, I lost my stepfather, Papa Edgar Latham, one of two of the most influential people in my life. In September, I lost my aunt, Tantida. One month later was the passing of my mom. A mom who has been dear to me. A mom who had taught me the fundamental values of life. Focusing on an early years growing up as a kid with my mom, I can clearly remember my mom would have me well dressed in my little bow tie every Sunday. And we will journey from Rushtam Park to Mespo to attend the Methodist Church and journey all the way back, rain or shine. My mom was a woman of faith and a strong believer. Weekends were her days for doing laundry. I can remember having to tag along with her to the river on a regular basis. There she will find herself a nice stone, water knee deep. And I can still see in my mind's eye that left arm back and forth. She's scrubbing and soaping while I stood by the side, playing in the water, and tried to do some fishing. Those days were very exciting for me. My mom was employed with the Banana Girls Association. The station was next to the cemetery, located directly opposite the Munzee supermarket. Working late at night, I will always go and meet her. Sometime, I will travel in the dark. One problem though, I was afraid to cross the cemetery. So I will wait at the hillside next to Miss May's shop until I see someone passing. Then I sprint across that cemetery. One of the best sketches I have ever seen was taken by my mom. She was just standing in the right place at the right time. That Sunday, she asked me to catch a chicken. We tried to lure it, 
but we missed the catch. Now we had to chase it. It took us from one neighbor to another, an exhausting chase. However, the fog took off flying at one point, like a plane, straight in the direction where my mom and a friend were standing. Without having to move an inch, she just stretched her hand, grabbed it by the feet, and that was the end of the chase. Everyone was shocked and amazed. My mom taught me to sew at an early age. All those pants I had ripped up. She had me stitching them all back. All those shirts without buttons because I cut them off to play marble or button to tip, that is what sometimes called. She had me replacing them all. A very long life lesson for me. She probably made me a tailor at a very young age and I didn't even realize it. My mom was a loving peaceful and very compassionate person. She taught me the value of respecting everyone, the young, the old, the rich, the poor, the physically and mentally challenged. She was my heart. She was my soul. She was my inspiration. And losing her is like losing the biggest part of me. Thank you, Mom, for all you have done. And I must say, I love you, I love you, and I love you. Bye, until we meet again. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Shalicia. My Chinese name is Xiao Han Yu. As we celebrate the life of my late mother-in-law, her son, Cooper, grandson, CJ, granddaughter, Manisa, will present a musical piece, Abide With Me.
Thank you for coming out or tuning in to pay your last respect and celebrate the life of my dear mother. My name is Calvert. I am the first child of the union between Edgar and Sylvia Douglas Latham. I often tell people that there are three firsts in my family. My father has a, had a firstborn, I have a firstborn, my mother a firstborn, and the union between them, I am also, I am also a firstborn. This year for me can only be described as a tragic year. I've lost two friends, Sylvanas and David, two cousins, Reginald Latham and Janet Samuel. I also lost my last aunt and both of my parents. When I was at home, I had the opportunity, I took the opportunity to spend some quality time with my mother. I had a rented car and I took her around the village and it was like she was discovering the village for the first time. And she was so amazed at the amount of new houses that had sprung up um, while she was unable to to get out of the house and she was so so delighted and uh, I felt very privileged and I felt very happy to be able to spend some quality time with her and, um, and she enjoyed it immensely. I grew up in Richmond Park. Both of my parents, both of my grandparents um, and parents lived on the same street on the same side of the street, um, just about 120 meters apart. As a child, I enjoy lollipop. And um, every Sunday, the lollipop band will, will come up. And when I hear the lollipop, the music of the lollipop band um, in the distance, I will I will run to my mom to um, for her to get me money or get um, lollip lollipop for me. One thing with my mother, she never have money, and so when I go to her and uh, for to get me lollipop, she will always say, "I don't have any money." And then um, I had a read on my mother for a long time. And so uh, when she says, I, have n I do not have any money, um, I will not be bothered. I will stay there and I will be waiting for, um, to hear what she says next. And then, they, then she will come with another, I don't have any money. And I will not be um, perturbed or this or disappointed, I will be still there waiting and watching her like a, like a little puppy. And, um, and between that second, um, I don't have any money, and her third statement, things will happen. It is either I will get the money to, um, to buy a lollipop, or she will repeat by saying, I told you, I do not have any money. Well, around this time, well, there, my, my feet will set into action because I will start run, running in order to beat the, the lollipop van. I must get to my other grandparents' house um, before the, the, the lollipop van arrived. Unbeknown to me, my sisters, my older sisters who were living with my other grandparents, um, all 
also used to be looking out for me to um, to be coming because they they knew my routine and and they will be looking out and they will be laughing and they'll be in with great anticipation they will be they will be looking for me to arrive um, when I do not arrive or do not show up they will know that uh, well I got lollipop but uh, when when uh, when they see me bolting up the road yeah uh, it was fun for them I must add that I have very fond memories of my older sisters I will I am their first brother and I was basically spoiled by them and I really appreciate all the good times we had together. The other thing that I would like to tell you about my mother is that um, when I was between the age of 10 and 13, my ear opened to the prayer of my mother. We were, live, we were now living in a small wooden house um, on a piece of property that my father had bought and um, it only had two, two bedrooms and I one day I just tuned in to the prayer of my mother and she was so she was praying so earnestly and intently that I actually went into a room and to see what's going on. And in her room, she was kneeling by her bedside and she had a white uh, piece of cloth covering her head. And I felt as if my mother was calling down the host of heaven to earth. And I could never forget that prayer. One day, I was uh, feeling down and um, I asked one of my brother to, to one of my brothers to record the a prayer for my mother. Do not um, like let her know that she's been recorded, but just record her prayer. Uh, well, I never received that um, that that uh, that recording, but that prayer kept coming back to me time and time again and I felt as though um, when I am down and alone and feeling alone my mother's prayer will buoy me up. Over the years my mother's prayer had you know lost some of its intensity um, you know, sometimes we get a little bit sophisticated and we are told to be more sophisticated in our prayer and it takes away from, from our earnestness and our genuineness when we try to be sophisticated. Just like the, the publican and the scribe a publican smote his hand on his chest and just say the words, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. The other thing I would like to tell you about my mother is that every time she leaves her home and return, she will always say, Oh, peace. To the shelter. Oh, peace to the shelter. As I mentioned before, this year has been a tragic year, 2021. And I want to leave with you the words of Thomas A. Dulcy, who himself had a tragic year. He lost his wife and 
child. And he wrote these words, he put pen to paper, and he wrote these words. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I am weak, I am warm. Through the storm, through the night. Lead me on through the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and let me go. When my way grows dear, precious Lord, linger near. When my light is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand. Lest I fall, take my hand, oh precious Lord, and lead me home. I pray that as we celebrate the life of my late father, that we will find comfort. afternoon everyone this is a poem titled my aunt my aunt was a woman who had smiles to brighten your days who always made you feel good with her warm words of praise and what is more she know what to do to make wishes come true she was my aunt. My aunt was someone who always had good stories to tell. But just as importantly, she knew how to be a good listener as well. She was patient, she was loving, and kind and the very best friend you could ever hope to find. She was no ordinary person. And I am proud to tell the world that Auntie's sister was my aunt. To the Latham and Douglas family, my condolences to you all. May her soul rest in peace. I never thought I would be here again saying goodbye to an, to an aunt. It's really hard. When I received the news about Auntie's sister passing, it was, it was shocking. I was, I was in shock. It was that fateful Monday. I just got home from work and I received a call that Auntie had passed away. And when I received that news, I couldn't sleep again. That Monday night, I couldn't. I couldn't even go into work. I had also a call in, call in, and took the night off. 
it is not easy losing a loved one. When I was young, I remember going down my specific auntie sister and I had to sit at the end at the end of the road to call out so they can hold hold back the dogs. I was afraid of those dogs. And I also remember that Auntie's sister was the serious one in the family. But as time passed and I would visit home, I would go down by her and we would talk and I saw this funny side of her. When I was younger, I see her as a serious one and now there's this funny side of her. She used to make me laugh, we'd sit down and we'd talk and she made me laugh. Those are memories I have. And I also, in 1999, when she came to Canada on vacation, um, I remember one Sabbath, she went to church with us. She spent the weekend by my sister. She, she spent also some time by my brother, Garth. And she visited the others as well. Love her. You know, she was, we welcomed her. It was really nice seeing and sister. Um, <clears throat> you will really be missed, I think. So my cousin, I want to extend my sincere condolences. It's not easy losing a loved one, I know. But as time passes, it gets easy. But Remember, you have those wonderful memories that will stay with you. Yes. So keep those memories to the list within you guys. So take courage and keep the faith. We love you and see you again next. Rest in peace. church I chose this song was to song for my father but I backed out but today I'm gonna try to sing it with a little bit of help
She taught me to love the Savior above. Thank God for a mother like Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here this afternoon to present the eulogy of the late Sylvia Adina Latham. I am very heartbroken by the loss of my mother-in-law, but very honored today to have the opportunity to reflect on her life. Sylvia Adina Latham, Affectionately, affectionately known as Sister, was born on December 21st, 1938, to the late James and Irene Douglas of Richland Park. She was the third of six children, all of whom preceded her in death, except for one brother, Leo Leopold Douglas. At a tender age, she attended the Maracua Government School, where she obtained her early childhood and primary education. Being the first daughter, Sister was a very instrumental figure in the Douglas household and was faced with many chores while her parents toiled to make a living. And so, at a very tender age, she was well-trained and disciplined and grounded in the art of housekeeping. One of her favorite chores was going to the river and wash and will ensure that every piece of garment was spotless. Back in the days growing up, it was the ambition of every young lady to learn a skill, be it sewing, cooking, or baking. I must truly say, sister had them all but was extremely passionate in the art of sewing. For many years, she was an active seamstress, but with the passing of, passing of age and time, and with a family of her own to take care of, Sister realized that sewing was bringing enough income, and thus obtained her first gainful employment with the St. Vincent Banana Growers Association as a weight clerk in the banana shed opposite the barrel ground in the late 60s. As production increased, the need for a bigger plant arose, and so the plant was moved to the Kelly Perbaxon plant, but at this time, Sister left to spend more time with her family. Sister met the love of her life Edgar, the late Edgar Latham, and were married on November 7, 1973. She assisted him with, in the caring of her four stepdaughters, Bess, Juliet, Eunice, and Valsina, before migrating to Canada to be with their mom, and they were equally treated with love and affectionate as her own. Sister was blessed with 10 children of her own. Leroy Dougie Douglas, Vivon Deirdre Douglas, and Wiener Douglas in the USA, Calbert Latham in Taiwan, Kellon Samuels, Andrea James, Bradford Latham, Frank Latham, Gasby Latham, and Myron Latham in St. Vincent. After her marriage, she worked hand in hand with her late husband in the banana industry and the farming, farming industry. 
but soon developed into an ardent, self-sufficient organic farmer, producing a variety of vegetable cash, cash crops, including tomatoes, eggplants, watercress, crystophene, cabbage, and string bean, to name a few. She was also specialized in scythe planting and would meticulously prepare a rectangular shaped scythe bed, then place, them, place the young seedling perfectly in a row, and in between she will place cow manure, producing some of the biggest organic scythe on this side of the planet. Some of the vegetable harvested ended up on the dinner table, nourishing 15 mouths and more. But most of her produce was sold to the surrounding Richland Park community and to the market in Kingston. Sister enjoyed making seasoning for herself, which was for family use, and as usual, a bottle or two for her neighbors and friends. After all, caring, sharing is caring. She would often set aside a part of her produce as an investment project for the church. Sister was very passionate about her garden and would spend countless hours weeding, planting, transplanting, watering, and nurturing her crops to perfection, making sure they were free of worms and other insects. Her home was never out of food. There was always enough to share with her neighbors and friends. Because of her love for farming and garden, gardening, the family home was surrounded by many fruit trees, such as mangoes, plums, gravels, passion fruit, five finger, sugar apple, sour sap, and many more. These attracted not only the children from the surrounding areas, but many school children from the Mountain View Adventist Academy and the Richland Park SDA Primary School. We can truly say today, as a result of farming, the family has been blessed with a pastor, teacher, nurse, mechanic, farmer, farmers, and other outstanding professions. Sister was introduced to the Advent message by her late husband, which she accepted and was baptized on August 10th, 1974, by Pastor C. Kirk, and has been a faithful member of the Richland Park Seventh-day Adventist Church ever since. She was a very active member and served the church in various capacities, such as Sabbath school teacher in the cradle roll department, deaconess, and the sanctuary choir. As a member of the community service department, Sister walked along with the other deacons and deaconesses of the church, ensuring that the church and the surrounding was kept clean at all times. She also assisted in preparing gongs for baptism, assisted new converts for baptism in and out of the water, the preparing, the preparation of communion service, and the cleanup process after the communion service. As a young child growing up, I always look forward to the annual trip to the mental asylum and the Lewis Punnett home organized by the Community Services Department. Sister played an integral part in this program, and along with the other members of the church, they worked together, warming the hearts of the residents with their sweet, melodious singing, prayer of thanksgiving, followed by the distribution of food and clothing. Such activities was also conducted in and around the Richland Park area. When there was scheduled work on the church property or on the school compound, it was customary for the men of the church to provide free labor while sister and the other ladies were busy preparing sumptuous meal for the workers. Sister never said no when come to church activities and seemed to find time to balance between home and church. Sister was a very devoted mother who instilled great Christian values in her children. Her motto was, train up a child in the way they shall go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it, Proverbs 22.6. 6. 
She may never sound like the angel. She may never preach like Paul, but she surely spread the love of Jesus, reminding us he died for all. Even after circumstances, circumstances made it difficult for her to attend church, she will faithfully read her Bible, study her Sabbath school quarterly, and conducted her own devotion on a daily basis. She enjoys singing and clapping and always welcomes her church family with open arms when visited. Her favorite song was, Thanks, Thanks, I Gave You Thanks. She had a fun personality, very caring, very loving, very humble, loved to cook, and nothing she had was too good to share. Once you entered her home, she makes sure that you were not living empty-handed or empty stomach. She always had something for you. On October 11, she died peacefully at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, leaving to mourn her 10 children, four stepdaughters, one brother, one brother-in-law, 22 grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, six daughters-in-law, two sons-in-law, many nie nieces, nephews, relatives and friends, included Susan Brown, Veronica Rees, Valmy Cupid, Nathan Munzi, and Alman Bab. Special thanks to the pastors, elders, and members of the Richland Park Seventh-day Adventist Church for their prayers, visits, and contribution, and to all who visit visited and assisted. Special thanks to the members of the Richland Park Diabetic and Hypertensive Group and to the doctors and staff of the Levi Latham Health Center and the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. She has fought the good fight. She has finished her course. She kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give her in that day, and not to her only, but unto everyone that love his appearing. Our life go on without you, but nothing is the same. We have to hide our heartache when someone says your name. Sad are the hearts that love you, silence are the tears that fall. Living here without you is the hardest part of all. You did so many things for us. Your heart was kind and true. And when we needed someone, we can always count on you. This special time will not return when we are all together. But the love and the memories in our heart, you will be with us forever. Sleep on, our dear sister. Morning, church. In the morning of creation, God placed a dream in every beating heart. A dream that freedom would be forever. But somehow that dream has all come apart. But it's still some time to change our mind. Truth and faith is the key. Say, I believe in God. Someday we will be free. There are people who are dying. For the right to shame their own destiny. Mothers crying, their children dying. All they want is a chance to be free. Oh, there's still some time to change our mind. Truth and faith is the key. Say, I believe in God. Someday we will be free. 
You may try to take my dignity, you may try to take my life from me, but deep down in my soul, I still be free. You may turn the dark and light on me, there's a light that shine inside of me. Deep down in my soul, I still be free. Oh, I still be free. Oh, there's still some time to change your mind. Truth and faith is the key. Say, I believe in God. Someday we will be free. We will be free. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Brother Gatsby, for your song. You share the sentiment of your heart. One day we will be free, once and for all, in the true sense of the word. I want to join with everyone and extend sincere sympathy to the Latham's family, the passing of Sister Sylvia Latham, a very faithful, committed member of this church who gave up herself unreservedly. Life and death are in the hands of the Lord, and if we had the power, I'm sure Sister Latham would still be alive today. But God knows what is best, and we can remain confident because there is hope beyond the grave. So, again, on behalf of the church, this Richland Park, the leadership of this church, elders, my family, members, Yea, the entire America East District, to whom many, by whom Sister Latham was well known, we extend sincere sympathy. So Brother Bradford and the rest of the family, please accept our condolences. And those who are viewing online, Pastor Calbert Latham, my pastor, very good friend. We understand your circumstances for you not being here. Want you to know that you're in our prayers and continue to be faithful. One day this too shall pass. I want to share with us for the next few minutes a message entitled Are You Ready? Are you ready? The text is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44. If you have, but well, it's on the screen. It says, Matthew 24 and verse 44 says, Therefore be ye what? Be ye ready. For in such an hour as ye what? As ye think not, the Son of Man Comment, shall we pray? And now, eternal God, you who lay out the curtains of this world, thou before whom angels veil their faces, we thank you, praise your holy name. Thank you for life. Our dear sister has departed this life. She did her duties and she did it well. She sang, she fellowship, 
She prayed. She nurtured her children. Now she has come to the end of the race, this life. And as we prepare to bid her farewell, we do so not out of ignorance, but in faith that she would have very much been ready when the call came. Speak to us today as we open our hearts to hear what you have to say. May everyone be comforted and may all of us be a show of our salvation and know beyond all doubt that Jesus is our Savior. Thank you for the blessed hope. Thank you for your presence today. And may you alone be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? There's a cliche that says, ready or not, here I come. By definition, the word ready means to be in a suitable state for an activity, action, a situation, fully prepared. Let me, let me go that over. By definition, the word ready means to be in a suitable state for an activity, action, a situation, fully prepared. This definition justifies the fact that readiness is an essential aspect of life. Of every aspect of life, readiness is concerned. Readiness is not, readiness that to be ready is not an inherited trait or characteristic that could be passed on from one individual to the other. You can pass down your inheritance to your children. But you can pass down your readiness to them. Are you still with me? And the contrary, to be ready, a readiness is a discipline that each individual has to cultivate for him or herself. Someone can encourage you. I, I can encourage you to be ready. Your husband can encourage you, your wife, to be ready. You can encourage your children to be ready, but you cannot be ready for them. Each man, each woman, each child, each of us has to be ready for ourselves. Each of us must be fully prepared for ourselves and for any event or situation. Each of us owe it to ourselves to be ready, regardless of what the circumstances may be, regardless of what it is that you are preparing for. You have to be ready for yourself. Given that none of us knows what tomorrow holds, Readiness, yea, to be fully prepared, is something not to be taken for granted or treated lightly. A failure to be ready could jeopardize one's career. A failure to be ready can undermine one's business enterprise. A failure to be ready could mean the difference between eternal life and eternal death. Imagine how different life would have been with that man standing over there, a living over there. If only he had been ready, if only he was ready when the opportunity presented itself, how different life would have been with him. Are you, are you here? How different. Life would have been with him. You know, perhaps somebody might be saying, or thinking to him or herself now, looking back in the past, 
and wish that you were ready when that moment came. And wish that you could have that opportunity again. Because you know, if that opportunity comes again, this time you will be fully prepared and fully ready. And I wonder if Sister Latham was ready. Look around carefully. Take a few minutes and look around you carefully. Do you see anyone who thought that he or she was ready? How about John? He thought that he was ready for marriage life. One year after they met, he wedded his beautiful bride, Lisa. Everything went well at first. What a fantastic wedding ceremony. What a beautiful couple. The prospect of a happy home and a happy life together could not have been more real. Their world was perfect. John could not have asked for more. And everything was falling in place just the way he expected it. But then the table turned and the, and the pendulum swung the other way. Unfortunately, as the story goes, no sooner had the honeymoon over than the reality of marriage life took its toll. When the dust finally settled and the rubber hits the road, John realized that he was not really ready for what he had bargained for. Hard as he strive, his marriage end in divorce. Let me ask you this question one more time. Are you ready? Are you ready? Every Sabbath morning, almost every Sabbath morning, I have to, I have to wake my children up, knock on their doors, tell them to get up for, to get ready for church. But when it's, when it's time to, for them to go on a trip, a travel, or someplace else, I don't have to wake them up. I don't have to wake them up. They get up 4 o'clock and 5.30. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? And they get themselves ready. Nobody has to say anything to them. What about the five foolish virgins? They thought that they were ready. To meet the bridegroom. Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to, to 13. You know the story of the ten virgins who thought, who prepared to meet the bridegroom. And nobody could tell the difference between the wise and the foolish virgins. And they all prepared themselves for the arrival of the bridegroom. They were confident that all was well with their, with their preparation. That's the foolish virgins. From their perspective, no stone was left unturned. At least so they perceive it to be. Along with the other five wise virgins, these foolish virgins were all members of the same congregation. They worshiped together, sang from the same hymnal to put it in a modern context. Believe the same doctrine and embrace the same spiritual value. And you could not tell who was wise or who was foolish. All ten had one common objective in mind. Prepare to meet the bridegroom. According to the parable, the bridegroom tarried, lingered, was delayed. His appearance was not as immediate as might have been expected. Whether it was by design or providence is unknown. The bridegroom assured his guests that he was coming. But he did not say when. He did not say what year. He did not say what time. He did not say what month. He did not say what day. But he assured the, the virgins that he was coming and they are to get ready and they are to be prepared and they are to be fully prepared. Brothers and sisters, the passing 
of Sister Latham is a reminder to each of us again that we are to be ready. And I don't think this point could be ever overemphasized. The need to be ready, regardless of whatever station in life you occupied. But one thing is certain with the foolish, five foolish virgins is that the bridegroom delayed arrival exposed their, their lack of readiness and self-deception. When it was announced, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The foolish virgins realized, but when it was too late, that they were not as ready as they ought to have been. And when they got up, Elder Williams, and checked their lamps, there was no oil, there was no light in their lamp, and they had no extra vessel with oil. And those who were ready, the Bible says, the bridegroom came, and they who were ready went in with the bridegroom to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let me ask you this very simple but basic an important question again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Suppose it comes tomorrow. Are you ready? Shakespeare says, Not a wit, we defy argury. There's, there's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. The readiness is all. That's the key. The readiness is all. Every day we get ready for certain activities, don't we? Every day we get ready for, for different things in life. We get ready for work. We get ready for appointment. We get ready for travel. We get ready for study. We get ready for school. Uh, some of us here, some of us before we, before we came here this morning, you we went to the mirror and you look at yourself and you didn't like how that dress looked and you changed it and you didn't like that hairstyle and you changed it because you wanted to be ready. You wanted to be ready for this service and this funeral. And perhaps you had prepared your, your dress yesterday or the day before. Who knows? I don't know. But how about, how about readiness for death? How about to be ready for death? That's a reality. That's a fact of life that none of us can deny. That is something that is real. How about readiness for death? Are you ready for that? If it comes tomorrow, are you ready for it? Or whether, whether we are ready or not, death will come. Whether we are ready or not, death will not turn our doors. Whether we are ready or not, rest assured, it will come. As a matter of brothers and sisters, to be ready, to be ready, in Jesus, if death comes tomorrow, or today, and next week, is our only hope beyond the grave. That's our only assurance of life beyond the grave. And Sister Latham knew that well. And I went to her house on numerous occasions, and I know that she was ready. Ready and made her part right with the Lord. I can testify of that based on her testimony to me. I know she was ready and made her part right with the Lord. Because that is the only hope. That is the only assurance of hope beyond the grave. To be ready if death comes tomorrow. When confronted with the prospect of losing his life, Paul was not afraid. In fact, he was ready to die, according to the scripture. And Mars Hill, 
When Paul was confronted with death, he was not afraid. He was ready. He was ready. He was ready to die. Why was he ready? Why was Paul so ready? Why was Paul not afraid? Why was Paul at ease with himself? Why was Paul so comforted and assured of his future? Why? Because he had accepted Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. Because he had been saved from condemnation. Because he had been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. His name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. And by virtue of that personal connectedness with the Lord, Paul was ready regardless of whatever the future holds for him. And in the presence of those who judge him worthy of death, he spoke with confidence in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. Let me find a passage of scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. And Mars Hill that day in the burning heat as the sword lifted to bring an end to the apostle's life. Paul said with confidence and assurance, having known Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, he said beyond the shadow of a doubt, I am now what? I am now ready. Can I say that today? Can I say that, Elder Bowman? Can I say I can say that if I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior? I can say that if it is well with my soul. I can say that if Jesus is all the world to me. And Paul could have said, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have made it right with my Savior. My name is written down there. I have a crown of life prepared for me. Jesus is my Savior and I am ready. Are you ready today? Are you ready? Ready or not, it will come. The servant of the Lord, Ellen G. White, writes, Divine sonship is not something that we gain of ourselves. Only to those who receive Christ as their Savior is given the power to become sons and daughters of God. The sinner cannot, by any power of his own, rid himself of sin. For the accomplishment of this result, he must look to a higher power. John exclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Christ alone has power to cleanse the heart. He who is seeking for forgiveness and acceptance can say only, Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Let me ask this important question again. Are you ready? If it comes tomorrow, if it comes today, if it be at midnight and midday, if it be at the dawning of breaking of the morning, or at the setting sun, are you ready? Finally, how about Christ's return? How about Christ's coming? That is a reality. And that is something that all of us look forward to. Those of us who walk with the Lord, Sister Latham, look forward to that. We look forward for the day when we will meet again and be reunited, never more to part. But what about Christ's return? Are you ready for that grand event? Uh, 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 have you heard it so often that, it's not, that it has lost its relevance? And it's no longer important that it has now become a cliche. Are oh, you living every day in readiness for that grand occasion? Have you made your calling an election show? Believe it or not, Christ will come. Whether, whether I believe it or not, Christ will come. Whether I am 
ready or not, Christ will come. But the question is, am I ready to meet Jesus? Tomorrow is uncertain. Now is the opportune moment. Today is the day of salvation. Having revealed to his disciples the signs which will characterize the last days and his coming, Jesus said to them in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44, he said unto them, Therefore be ye also ready. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus said to his disciples, don't be caught off God. Don't let this day come upon you unexpected. Be watchful. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be fully prepared and ready for your Lord's coming. Will L. Thompson in his hymn, there's a great day coming. A great day coming by and by. In, his, in the refrain, he asks this sobering question, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for a judgment day? There's a great day coming. A great day coming. By and by. You don't know when. I don't know when. But the question comes in the refrain, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? I want to be ready. What about you? Do you want to be ready? If you want to be ready, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. One might ask, how can I be ready, Pastor? How did Sister Latham get ready? What did she do to be ready? How can I be ready, Pastor, to meet Jesus if he comes tomorrow? How can I make my calling an election show? How can I be ready? The answer is simple. Accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. John says, he came unto his own, and his own receive him not. But as many as receive him, to them do what? To them give he the power to become the sons of God. Right this very minute, if you're not ready and you open your heart and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he can make you ready. You can be ready. It matters not where you have been. It matters not what you have done. It matters not what the world say. What makes the difference is Jesus in your heart. Is Jesus in your life. That's the key to be ready. And lastly, John says, he that have the son, have what? Have life. He that have the son, have life. And he that have not the son of God, have not life. You want to be ready for that great day? Jesus must reside in your heart. Jesus must be your savior. Jesus must be your Lord. I am glad that Sister Latham made her part right with the Lord. She sensed the need to be ready. And she took advantage of the opportunity when it came along. She did not trifle with her eternity. She made it right with her Savior. She made her part ready. On one of these good days, when the trumpet sung, Brother Bradford and the dead in Christ are resurrected. We would all meet again in the sea of glass. Oh, what a reunion that would be. What a time that would be, Brother Gatsby, when at last we would be free. Free in the true sense of the word. Free in Jesus' name. Do you want to be ready? I want to be ready. Give me a wave if you want to be ready. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You really mean that? You really mean you want to be ready? Why not stand with me? Stand with me as we sing this beautiful hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Did we sing that? Let's sing that again 
And while we are singing, the family members would come to the front. As I have a prayer for you. Blessed assurance, Jesus. Mark, mark, mark the words of this hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. It is Jesus that is yours that gives you the assurance. Mark the word of that song. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte. Sing it like you mean it. Watches of God. Sing it like if you mean it. Born. Born of his Washed in his blood. Washed in his blood. This is my story. Sing it. This is my story. This is my song. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture. Visions of rapture. Now burst on my side. Angels descending. Angels descending. Bring from above. Bring from above. Echoes of mercy. Whispers, whispers of love. This is, this is, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Perfect submission, all is at rest. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I, in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Everybody with your chorus now, sing it, sing it. This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. Praise in my Savior. All the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Your heart is lifted heavenward. Our oh, Father, Richard in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done today in our hearts, in our lives, in our deportment, at our workplace, at home a church in the community, wherever we find ourselves, oh God. Grant that it is your will and your will alone will be manifested for the world to see that indeed we are children of our Heavenly Father. Lord, we are here gathered today to bid farewell to our departed sister, even Sister Latham. We we'll live a full life. She did not waste her years 
She lived a full life, occupied herself. She was industrious, ambitious, a wonderful wife, wonderful mother, faithful sister, beautiful aunt, dedicated member of the church. She gave up her all and she gave up her best. And now she has laid down the burdens of this life free from cares and worries and anxiety. And are resting comfortably, Lord, in full assurance of the resurrection morning. Because we believe beyond all doubt that she was ready. Ready when the call came. Ready when the invitation came to accept you as our Lord and Savior. And on that basis, she has secured her readiness to meet you on that resurrection morning. We thank you for her love. Thank you for her grace. Thank you for her kindness and dedication that has made a difference in the life of her children, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren and other relatives. And now, Lord, as they adjust to the fact that she's no longer here, that she's gone, I pray that not only her memories will be cherished, her love, but also the difference that she had made in their life, her affection, her kindness, the legacy she lived, the beautiful life she lived would continue to inspire them to do that what is right and live to please you most of all. Oh God, keep the family together, all of the children, the grandchildren, great-grandchildren, keep them united as one big family. But most of all, may each of them know you personally as Lord and Savior of their life. So that like Latham, like Sister Latham, they too can be ready and make their calling and election show. Guide them in all their endeavors. May they stay on the straight and narrow way. And if there's any among them who may have wandered from the fall, bring them back soon, Lord. That they will come back to the place where you want them to be. Let them know that there is mercy with the Lord. There is forgiveness with the Lord. There is grace with the Lord. God's arms are still outstretched to receive them. And he's willing to clothe them again in his righteousness. And if there is any who have never walked with you, Lord, as the Spirit speaks to their heart, may they open up and surrender and invite you to come in so that they too can be ready if death comes tomorrow or if you come tomorrow. We ask for your blessings upon them in every regard. May your anointing rest upon them. May you feel, may they feel your presence and know for sure that you are loving and kind Savior. Oh Lord, guide them through all of their days. Supply all of their needs, whatever it may be, dear Father. And may they be so knit together, bonded together. May they have love one for another. Always care for one another. Looking out for one another that they would live together indeed as children of their heavenly Father. And Lord, we pray that your blessing would rest upon all of us as well. And as we live, may we do so with full assurance that one day you would come and death will die. This too shall pass. What a day that would be when we see your face at last with Egbert and Sylvia and all those who have gone before. We would once meet again, no more tears to be shed, no more sadness, no more heartache, no more sorrow. We long for that day, Lord, even so, come, Lord Jesus. But until then, bless the family, we pray. Grant them peace, grant them joy, grant them comfort, grant them assurance of eternal life. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. And Amen. God blessings upon you. Remain standing for the closing exercise. What a message. Are you ready? Please join me as we sing our closing song. 
Thank you, Pastor. It is well with my soul. message for the reminder of God that we need to be ready. I pray to God that as we leave this place to go to the place of interment, that your spirit will continue to be with us. I pray to Father that your Holy Spirit will continue to comfort pray for the bereaved family as it bring comfort to each one of us as well. So now as we depart, may the presence of your Holy Spirit Continue to abide with each one of us and bless us in Jesus' name.